Hello, <coughs> welcome to Blender Sushi. This is um, yet another live noting um, using Blender and animation nodes. Today I'll be talking about something that might be like a prerequisite to image mosaic effect. Um, I don't know yet how it's gonna go um, in which direction I will take this uh, live noting series uh, too so but today I suddenly have this idea what if what if if we use um, animation nodes to kind of have control over multiply images that's kind of the area that um, not much uh, people talk about with animation nodes of, of course you can you can animate objects right and you can play around with the mesh like the vertices and all all those kind of like a uh, low level uh, mesh components but sometimes I rather have kind of a uh, have exploration over more on the high level kind of like uh, when I talk a lot about color I actually when I colorize many objects, like uh, multiple objects using animation nodes, I kind of like the idea of having control over many objects at the same time and we can see it on the screen. So today I'll attempt to do that using image textures. There will be some like uh, Blender knowledge needed in order to understand the whole thing, but I'll try to take you through it. So. Let's get started. So at first, my idea is to have just a, let's say you have a plane, right? And you, I'll quickly give this a material and a textures. I want you to see my whole thinking process um, in order to create this video. This video is going to be like introduction for whatever complex things and that, might, that uh, we might look at in the next videos. So. You imagine you have um, an image on the screen, just like a plane, and uh, I'll create a material real quick. We are using Blender Render. For Blender Cycles, we might have a um, different way to do it, slightly different way, because with Blender Cycles, you can actually control the nodes um, that drive the materials. With Blender Render, let's start with Blender Render anyway. So. Um, I have this just a single plane in this in the 3D scene and then I will create a texture for it. So this is the material. So an object, a single material, and then um, we have the texture. Okay, let's create a texture. The thing that's interesting with Blender is you can load image or movie. And with image as well, you can have like a single image or sequence of image. So let's do that real quick. I'll quickly point into. Let's have a look. I'll just use the render from the other day. It's a 64 frames render. I'll select all the images. So it's gonna be a like image sequence. And then so we have choice of generated movie image sequence or single image we are gonna be dealing with image sequence right so blender knows because I select many multiple image blender knows okay you are selecting multiple image and then it's gonna be a se image sequence and then I want it to be display texture material in order for this to be display we might need to do the UV stuff real quick. I'll do it real quick. So in Blender, in order to do that, normally I'll tell my student to go to UV, UV editing, and then you actually hit tab, and then U for unwrap, and then just select unwrap. This is gonna be a quick one. So this will create a UV. You don't need to go to UV editing, but this show you the whole thing. So now back to the default. 
Well, oh, this guy has UV now. And so we have UV map, image sequence. Still not displaying. Okay. We probably need to be in the material mode. We probably need to turn on the GLSL. So you probably always want to use GLSL or maybe if you're using multi-texture there must be an option in Blender in, in order to display that but I'll just use this for now so we have a single image and now we can play with this idea of kind of using multiple image but in Blender again there are a couple of options that you need to understand so things like auto refresh and cyclic so that's need to be on cyclic so I believe if so we specify in Blender we have a 64 image this is by default Blender does this for us but later on with with we manually doing it ourselves and using the animation nodes we need to know how many the total number of uh, frame so with cyclic I believe if we go over 64 now it's gonna cycle so that's a good thing that's something that we can use definitely and with offset I, uh, later on you will see that offset we can also use but sometimes it doesn't work properly we either gonna play with the offset number or the start number the idea of course to make like a mosaic image um, let's see if of course you know in oh, okay we actually need a light if you want a flat light, just use a hemisphere. Hemisphere, but it's kind of flatten the image. But it's okay for now. What we will do, of course, we're gonna create a copy of this image or something like that. And we have before if if you are if you are just duplicating the image, we're just gonna use like something like grid arrange and then we're gonna instant that thing and then gonna place it correctly maybe two by two because it's just a square and that's the original so the all kind of this is the usual thing you want to do but of course with the current configuration you have to know that this is a single image being um, duplicated um, sorry so go back to the 3d view material this is a single image right? if I open up the outliner single image being duplicated multiple time using the object instancer um, if you look at the data of the instance so we'll see the plane data is the same for every instance copy what we really want is actually different material and maybe the same textures but different material for each object even though let's say I turn on deep copy deep copy now will create a like a duplicate mesh for each object but still using the same material so we cannot do this we cannot do it this way because if we if, if we select any of the object instance and then go to the material, um, go to the texture and 
and start changing thing. So you see it doesn't it doesn't work. Each object will do the same thing. What we really want is kind of to have like a stagger effect. So what we need is a texture, kind of like a texture node for each of the object. We need a random texture node for each object. How are we going to do that? So um, there are maybe a couple of ways to do this. If you're using cycles, you might be able to use just multiple texture nodes. But this is just to get to to let you know, um, to show you really clearly what I'm tr going to do. Right. So instead of um, we will not be re relying on animation nodes to for now I mean we will later but you know uh, we need to create like a multiple texture node before we are able to control everything using animation nodes so that's that's what I often think about animation nodes it's kind of like you become like kind of a conductor for multiple array of objects and you do this much much easier using animation nodes rather than doing it manually or using script. You will not do it this manually, of course. If you have 10 objects, it's probably fine, but you have 100 objects or 1000 objects, it's kind of really stupid to do it manual manually and then you don't have control over a lot of things and you want to script that, but we're going to do that using animation nodes. So how are we going to create multiple material and multiple textures? We will use an add-on. There is uh, actually a Blender add-on that's super useful. It's called uh, like image planes or something. I think it's called planes. Import images as planes. That's what I will use for now. In the future, when when you're probably able to instance material and textures using animation nodes we might be able to skip this part for now it's okay I'll load the, um, this add-on and then with a blank scene I'll use the import images as planes so this thing got created by that add-on images as planes Okay. Now I will load the render from the other day. So it's the 64 frames of render. Import import images as planes. There's um, options here. How you want to align planes? How you want to offset it? Let's give it offset of 0.25. You can use alpha as well. This can be really cool if you have a lot of image with alpha. And you kind of use get the idea in 3d sometimes you use cards to to fake uh, lots of objects and yeah let's just do that and then load the images so it's 64 frames got loaded the add-on will load all the 64 images create image planes for each images so we have 64 um, image here and I believe we can use the texture. Okay, good. It's actually working. Um, solid, solid doesn't work. Maybe solid with a texture on. Yeah, solid with a texture on works really fast. We don't need a light and camera. This so we have all the image loaded. Each got offset it slightly. That's exactly what I want. And if you look at every object here, now have a different material. Material is called 0001, 0002. And each material has um, different texture objects, I believe. Texture that's linked. Yes. So. That's what we want, but at the moment, you see, you have 64 objects in 3D scenes, and uh, okay, 
we want to arrange that of course for that we can use animation node so you see you see what's going on here you kind of have control for multiple objects much easier anyway so I'll just show you with a example create a new node tree for animation node and then we have control we know it that we have control over the objects position and we can let's say okay we want to arrange it in a grid right but we also we first we want to select 64 objects okay select all the objects all the 64 objects in the scene and with animation nodes we already know we have objects from group so we're gonna group our selected objects let's uh, undo that what did I do control G control G and we have our group from our group nodes now we can control each and every single objects and so look through objects and then what I usually do um, object transform output and we tell animation nodes okay we're gonna control the locations of each object and since we have this okay objects from group goes into this loop stuff and for each object stack it or arrange it into grid at this moment it will of course jump into 0 0 0 if I cut this everything is at 0 0 0 which is which is okay for now and we're gonna arrange it into a grid and we have grid mesh for that because grid mesh okay this node will create like a vertices position that's arranged in the grid so that's why so if we create like a vector list here and plug in the vertices position we can plug this into there so we have the object back into the um, kind of arranged into what we want uh, it be texture let's uh, kind of fill into our object um, fill selected yeah, I don't have my numpad keyboard. This is on the laptop. So we have our object. It should be 8x8 because it's a 64 different cards. And with the distance, you just kind of eyeball it. So now we have what we want. This is, um, I believe, if you use. If we use the solid and texture solid that's kind of the fastest for blender blender to process my laptop is kind of slow but anyhow so we have the objects arranged like this like I said so the grid mesh grid node will generate the point position for our bunch of object here and then it's arranged like this so it's a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 and then so on until 64 so this is the first um, let's see mosaic let's quickly save this mosaic 001 and save it if you want to stack it I say in currently in animation nodes you have the generator. Where's the generator? Geometry objects. I'll just search it. So we have line mesh 
just two generator objects line mesh grid mesh maybe soon we will have like a circle mesh but what I often use this because grid creates as you can see it creates nice grid while the line mesh will stack your object normally you want to stack it up in the z axis let's have a look so if you have like okay tell it 64 objects and stack it you gotta stack this is actually can be really fun to play with as well 64 objects you can kind of stagger it slightly at the random index random locations per perhaps you don't want to randomize the Z too much so if you use just a vector map random so random gives you that which is cool it's still stack but random but you might just want to randomize the X and Y and not a Z not the Z so if you use a separate separate vector so we have this bunch of vector goes in and we have combine vector we want the x and the y to be randomized but z stay at the z and we can just then add this so so that's kind of the effects we can have real quick and that's your objects get stack and because this is a line um, line mesh node we can arrange our object whatever we please so this is really fun to play with in fact this is should be the first basic introduction to animation nodes you have control over so many objects and then you use the loop to play with the scaling and all sort of things So, yeah, of course, we don't, we simply go back to grid now. So the grid also has been randomized slightly. We probably don't want that for now. We just want a simple grid. Simple grid. Like so. And now, of course, none, none of our objects is uh, animating. And here's I want I will need to use um, a little bit of Python scripting. Okay, don't be scared. Um, it's gonna be just a simple, quick Python scripting. What because what we have at the moment is. We have 64 images loaded as planes and the good thing is each one of them has different materials now and different texture objects. Ideally we just want a single material and multiple image texture that we can select from. Yeah, that's the ideal way. Um, that's uh, our homework to do or your homework. But now we have like a 64 material and 64 textures but what's important is with the texture we want it to be we want it to be in an image sequence mode for each of each one of them we need to switch it to image sequence that's the first 
task. And we have a look here, bpy data dot images. The name of the image, the source is switched to sequence. That's what we want. I'm just gonna copy that. This is a Python script. We can use animation nodes actually. Um, someone could just make a dedicated object, uh, dedicated node just to deal with textures and to deal with material. But for now, we're just gonna do it using Python. We're gonna need to load the BPY module. Okay, so this is like gonna be like a single run script kind of thing. So our all our images is gonna be bpy data dot images. We're gonna want to operate for each and every object. So it's kind of like in in animation nodes you, you use the loop node, and we kind of gonna do that so far. So. For every image in I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna run it. I think it's uh, it might be fail. Okay, that seems to be working. Image sequence dpy data dot images source. Okay, now it seems to be working, but now our 3D field is kind of confused and it doesn't update unless I activate it. It might be Blender kind of limitation of multi textures. If I switch to JLSL. And switch to material or texture mode. It should update. Hmm. Render might crash because of this script. I'll switch off Firefox. It's probably Google search. Okay, now in GLSL we can see we actually need a light. I'll just use Hamis here for now. See, that's a. Unfortunately, my MacBook Pro is kind of slow when I'm using GLSL. But okay, seems to be working anyway. So now each and every object's material has uh, this is sourcing image sequence, and we know that for every image sequence we sequence we need to put a, the total number the frame durations need to be 64 and we can use python to change that number as well but i decided to use animation nodes for that if you if you're guessing that we can use the object attribute output you might be able to do this I'm not quite sure um, it's quite possible as long the object is is a kind of link to the object as long the material and texture is linked to that object you can iterate through each of the objects but to simplify this I will just use um, the script node script node I will create a new script 
and then I will source the script so this is our script it's currently blank don't worry with the blankness we will soon find out that this is really really really, really powerful so once again animation nodes with animation nodes we have um, easy control of our array of objects that's usually you will never you probably never think of we know that we have 64 objects 64 materials and 64 textures right currently we are looking at the textures and with the textures each of them has these attributes that we can work with so it says if you ha we have a look at that it's a bpy.data.textures the, th the name of the textures and then image user frame durations we went we want to change each and every single object's textures to have 64 frame as the total okay let's do that um, using animation nodes so the duration it's an integer I know it's an integer data it's a whole number integers and let's just call this one total frame total frames right there We're gonna copy the data path, paste it, image user frame duration. It doesn't make sense for now, but soon. I believe if you hold Command Alt Shift Copy, you can get the whole. Yeah, you see, when I paste, it's the whole thing. I'll create instead of creating a loop here since we already have a loop inside animation nodes and we have the our index here going from 0 to whatever number we can definitely use that inside a loop what I mean is instead of doing it like this and so you having image blah attribute make it blah instead of having loop again we are gonna just have take advantage of this uh, index number so create another integer and just call it index we can plug in the index into that thing and just replace this guy with index index and the frame duration is gonna be if we say 64 then each one of them each one of this is gonna be 64 and then we can now really quickly save this save now of course this is animation nodes and this is actually inside a script node you can specify the total number of frame right here okay so that can be super handy
and in fact we we want to stagger each and every frame um, let's see we actually need a cyclic to be on as well hmm we can use Python cyclic on EPY data texture image user cyclic so. use cycle true so now each one of them has cyclic true okay what else um, and you can you can of course have like a boolean here and image cyclic and this say cyclic so I'm showing I'm showing you how we can kind of create all these nodes controlling the texture for each object using animation nodes. I wasn't intended to, but so that's yeah, that's cool. You can have cyclic on and off, and you can control the number of total number. Yeah, everything from here. That's really really powerful. <laughs> I cannot emphasize more now for every single object here it's currently displaying the same image but we kind of want to offset it either use offset or start offset might be a better one to use yeah, let's just use offset. So offset, it's called frame offset. The attribute is called frame offset. Let's create another one. Integer. Let's save this just in case it crashes. File save as. Mm -hmm. Copy this. And call this frame offset. Frame offset. Frame offset. Frame offset. Now if we want to stagger the offset, we can use again our index. Frame offset is not named, frame offset is not defined. I misspell, so it's okay. Now, let's we wait a few seconds for script to update. Now we have this guy. So the thing is, with uh, maybe it's Blender limitation frame up unfortunately frame offsets giving this kind of pink color I think it shouldn't do this but yeah that's really unfortunate maybe when the frame it should be cycling that's what I thought 
So instead of using the offset, unfortunately we just need to use start, but it's okay. It's okay because we can always offset it on the fly. Um, like uh, image user has no attribute start. Okay, it's actually called frame start. So I'm sh I'm showing to you how we can do that. Yeah. Okay. I forgot to make for offset back to zero zero zero. Sorry about that. Frame offset. Back to zero zero zero. Cut this. Okay, frame offset zero zero zero. Everything is good. Blender is happy. Let's check again. It's called frame start. And we're gonna offset it. Like that. Now everything is working as we want. If I zoom in, so it's a 64 objects. And each of one of them is got offset it by one frame. And that's actually exactly what you want if you play back the animation. <laughs> Let's see if it's playing in real time. Because my somewhat my Mac is slow when using GSL GLSL. So it's working as we want it perfectly. I was just gonna stop the animation Alt A okay too slow if I use my other computer the desktop is a little bit faster but they both are almost 10 years old Need to upgrade my computer soon, I guess. So back to previous. So 64, 64 frames, each of them you can animate. You can play back and everything's animating. You can offset it actually inside um, animation nodes. Don't worry about start frame, frame offset. You can, you can randomize the start frame, of, of course. But you can also um, offset it inside animation nodes. Okay. Not sure what's going on. Is this still playing back? Cancel. Hit escape. What's Blender doing? Hmm. Maybe it's still trying to play back or something. Well, anyhow, I think I'm showing you the whole techniques. Um, we can stop right here right now um, you could of course play uh, play with the this and the leaf uh, list shift 
and list shuffle that you can use to kind of randomize your mosaic kind of arrangement and then since we have control over the material and the textures you can you can do a lot of things actually yeah um, you can perhaps drive the image sequence using um, let's say in order to create a mosaic for example you kind of um, maybe you create kind of algorithm that let's say you have one image of like portrait of yourself for example and you want to blender to kind of okay using animation nodes you want to sample the original image per pixel and then you kind of tell okay this image should be red color image and then so you in the end basically you, you create like a kind of mosaic effects but that's kind of like a much more complex example for now if you if you understand just the, the idea of you can have multiple objects and multiple materials and multiple textures and then using animation nodes to drive and kind of kind of conduct every single frames and then kind of offset it make it random and then shuffle it and then just whatever you like to do that's kind of really powerful in itself just that idea you can do a lot so blender is probably frozen i'm gonna just terminate terminate blender and then let's reopen it and see see what we got it's probably the recording complaining or there's an update we open blender file open animation node mosaic let's just wait a couple more seconds okay everything is loading nicely we might actually we don't need to calculate each time sometimes we with animation nodes it, it gets slow because it's calculating a lot of things every frame every time or every single cycles you can set it up so it only calculated every time the frame is changing or every time the property is changed mm. okay we are back to where we are almost back to where we were except that we don't have the frame offset thing I decided to continue on so frame start that's what we're gonna use frame start is the attribute so just imagine say the, the front bit is for every single objects that's gonna be looping inside animation nodes and by using this Python script we can have access for each of every attribute every attribute you can do the same thing with modifier as well it's really powerful use cyclic frame start frame start this is gonna be our number frame start we just quickly create a frame start right there and we're gonna stagger it I believe it's actually working um, change, three chains frame change the frame and then animation node is calculating this is actually real time. If your computer is fast, if your computer is less than few years old, you will do this like really quickly. 
see each one of them is staggering if you actually wanna kind of okay I just wanna randomize thing you can kind of trick it using sh shift list and shuffle list I almost forgot to show you this so shuffle basically this is outside the loop this is our loop okay we can forget about that outside the loop we can shuffle the list because shuffle list is kind of looping as well it's looping every list and then kind of shuffle it and we, we know we have our the list of vertices that define the position of our um, instance uh, our objects it's not an instance copy it's our real objects vertices goes into there and then shuffle goes into there and if we shuffle it's not doing anything because we need to turn on probably turn on that so this is actually fast you can shuffle you can shuffle and you can play back and it's really really fast only the only thing is uh, probably it's probably my computer graphic card is not powerful enough to display 64 different textures at the same time so this is nice it's really nice and shift also can shift your frame kind of like offsetting this is also a cool effect but this is more like we are actually rearranging the object each frame or each property every time the number changes it's changing like this you might want to do that and you can shuffle and shift as well shuffle and shift that's actually really fast. I like that. Um, I'm just curious. Curious about um, multi texture. Multi texture. Okay, multi texture is happy to display this guy. And changing frame. Yeah, that's the limitation of Blender. It doesn't. Maybe it's my my graphic card is not doing it properly it's only updating active objects it's only updating the textures for active objects but if you have GLS GLSL it will work but just it's super slow in my computer in your computer it should be it should be a blaze let's save this real quick I might create a like just a, like a demo this is kind of like a my main reason to create a live noting I should actually like uh, create an article um, to to accompany my live noting video but so yeah I hope that this um, live noting session is useful for you um, it's the basic of creating mosaic of uh, multiple objects using animation nodes um, later on we might continue with this um, same ideas but using for this different kind of effects and so yeah hopefully you find this uh, useful please subscribe to my channel in order for this channel to continue or yeah um, I thank you very much for uh, viewing this channel and supporting my channel um, I might create blog articles in related to this video if I have time um, for now this video hopefully you